Hi, good afternoon. I'm Edward Graham, field application scientist here for EMEA North with Precision Nanosystems. Um, so I'd like to welcome you to this uh, Tea Time webinar. And today we have Dr. Erica Quagliarani, from the, who is a research fellow at the Sapienza University of Rome. And today Erica is going to be talking to us about microfluidic manufacturing of multi-component lipid nanoparticles for in vitro delivery of plasmid DNA. I'll just um, introduce our team really briefly. So we have um, AJ uh, Joni, who's our regional sales director, Suha Zuwein, who is our inside sales uh, specialist here with EMEA North, and uh, Jürgen Schmidt Schontig, who's our regional sales manager for EMEA South. Um, and then there's Richard uh, Broadhead, myself, uh, Sarah Gherkin, and Martin Rabel, who are our field uh, applications scientists in the region and can uh, support everyone with uh, precision nanosystems technology. I'll stop sharing my screen. Uh, and I'll uh, let Erica take it from here. Thank you. So hi, everybody. I'm very happy to have this opportunity to talk about my work. That as um, Edward already said, is about the um, production of a multi-component liquid uh, nanoparticle uh, generated by microfluidic, uh, a microfluidic device for the delivery of the plasmid DNA in uh, vitro. So let's dive in. Uh, first of all, why the need for a gene delivery system? As uh, I suppose many of you know, uh, to exert their function properly, nucleic acids needs to um, reach their target tissue without any alteration of, of their complex structure. Nevertheless, naked nucleic acids are um, highly susceptible to rapid degradation from the bloodstream and also clearance from the immune system. Um, and moreover, uh, even if uh, directly injected in the cell cytoplasma, they do not work uh, uh, at all, as demonstrated in 1980 in the work of uh, Mario Papicchi, that was a Nobel Prize, is a Nobel Prize. So uh, such limitation can be uh, overcome by the use of a gene delivery system that can protect and uh, prolong the circulation time of uh, the nucleic acids. And after the interaction with the cell membrane can release the uh, cargo uh, in the cell machinery. So in the case of the RNA, it re um, must release the cargo in the cell cytoplasm. Uh, in the case of DNA, in the nucleus. Over the past decades, uh, several aspects have been uh, optimized to generate the gene delivery system uh, uh, with uh, clinical utility. Aspects uh, such as uh, reproducibility, uh, reproducibility of the synthesis process, uh, the improvement, uh, improvement of the encapsulation efficiency of the genetic material, uh, the control over the particle physical chemical characteristics, uh, as well as the interrogation process and the mechanism of nucleic acid release. Um, this since uh, um, 2015, the number of gene delivery systems has drastically increased with the uh, novel concept of uh, lipid nanoparticle that culminated with the, um, the first ever RNA loaded lipid nanoparticle that is uh, on platform. Uh, Interestingly, in May 2020, uh, three clinical studies were, uh, were started on the COVID-19 vaccine that were based on these uh, platforms, and um, in particular, two of them uh, resulted both uh, extraordinarily efficient in contrasting this infection. Uh, so in uh, December 2020, they were approved by the USA, USA Food and Drug Administration. So why the systems are so uh, promising and efficient? Uh, firstly, uh, they um, have evolved away from the conventional lipid-based uh, delivery systems um, in terms of the anhydrous encapsulation efficiency of the nucleic acids, uh, an improved penetration into the tissues, uh, and lower cytotoxicity and uh, immunogenicity. Uh, this was firstly um, principally due to uh, their characteristic multi-component lipid shell that consisted in a cationic or ionizable lipid to uh, permit the interaction with the negatively charged nucleic acids. 
some help her lipids to promote the, the um, physiogenic ability towards the cell membrane, and also a peculiarity to enhance the bioability of the, the systems. In addition, also the, um, micro, the manufacturing process has been optimized to produce uh, uh, more handling and um, uh, um, reproducible uh, um, systems um, by the adoption, with the adoption of the microfluidic uh, device. That is a promising technology that is based on the rapid mixing uh, between an organic phase containing lipids and an aqua solvent containing the nucleic acids. So the microfluidic platform uh, is a um, scalable, robust, uh, and ideal reproducible, uh, reproducible technique that enhances the uh, productivity and uh, perform performance of these uh, non-viral vectors. However, currently um, in the spotlight as a vital component of uh, COVID-19 vaccines, uh, uh, RNA lipid nanoparticles uh, uh, play a key role in protecting and, transporting, and um, transporting the messenger RNA in, uh, in the cell. As for the delivery of um, plasmid DNA, DNA, there are no formulations we feel for this uh, purpose. In fact, the um, well-established gap existing between the uh, bench, uh, benchtop discoveries and uh, uh, the clinical success of uh, gene delivery systems uh, is mainly uh, due to the poor understanding between the synthetic uh, um, identity of the systems and uh, their uh, um, cellular responses. So uh, Irene, we uh, focused on the uh, investigation of different uh, manufacturing parameters affecting the synthetic identity of uh, uh, lipid nanoparticle encapsulating plasma DNA to uh, generate uh, efficient uh, um, uh, lipid pDNA complexes. I, for a better um, understanding, I divided the work in uh, three work packages. In the first work package, uh, I will show you the production of uh, this system through a microfluidic device. Then I will move on the characterization, the physical chemical characterization of these complexes. And finally, I will pass to the uh, in vitro validation through transfection uh, experiments on uh, um, model cell line uh, system. So let's start. In the, our first aim was the uh, investigation of different uh, several factors affecting the uh, synthetic uh, um, identity of uh, this system by performing the systematic changes in uh, um, different uh, um, different factors such as the lipid composition, the microfluidic uh, uh, parameters uh, parameters such as the total flow rate and the lipid pDNA uh, weight ratio. Um, this um, allows us to generate uh, um, a library of uh, lipid uh, nanoparticles, multi-component lipid nanoparticles that were small in size and highly uh, homogeneous. In particular, the latest development uh, um, about the lipid-based uh, on the lipid-based gene delivery system have uh, highlighted the greater transfection uh, efficiency of multi-component uh, um, multi-component enveloped type lipid nanoparticles respect to the single and binary systems. So our multi-component lipid nanoparticle formulation was made of 50% um, of cationic lipids, in particular DOTAP and uh, DigiCol, to um, enhance the interaction with the negatively charged uh, nucleic acids. Then we use uh, some uh, two alpha lipids, DOPE and uh, cholesterol. Um, as for the DOPE, uh, dope lipid, we, cho uh, we have chosen this uh, kind of lipid for um, its uh, uh, packing capabilities uh, uh, conferred by the presence of two unsaturated uh, um, groups on its uh, uh, carbon tails. As for the cholesterol, uh, it promotes the uh, permeability towards the cell membrane. Finally, we uh, choose a um, PEG lipid, the DOPE PEG, to prevent the non specific uh, absorption of uh, the uh, protein and the uh, particle uh, aggregation. So, as for the characterization of uh, this uh, system, so we perform uh, um, dynamic less capturing measurements in terms of uh, size and uh, zeta potential uh, measurements. 
We firstly focused on the effect of uh, the PEG lipid and the uh, total flow rate of the microfluidic mixing. So we generated two, uh, um, uh, two unpigulated lipid nanoparticles and two pigulated lipid nanoparticles with a, a low total flow rate and high total flow rate. And these four panels are uh, represented the um, size and zeta potential uh, distributions of uh, these systems. And um, it is clear how the um, unpigulated lipid nanoparticle resulted bigger in size and uh, more um, polyspersed with uh, respect to the um, contour parts and the pigulated contour parts, as it, uh, um, it is uh, uh, reported in the, this table in table one. Uh, another important uh, uh, aspect was the uh, impact that it has the uh, total flow rate on the polydispersion of the samples. In fact, we passed uh, with, the, with the increasing of the total flow rate, we passed from 0.1 PDI value to uh, 0 0.3 uh, PDI value. Um, uh, in addition, all the samples resulted uh, positively uh, charged. Uh, but, uh, however, uh, since lipid nanoparticles uh, um, bigger than 200 nanometers are not suitable for uh, um, in vitro experiments, uh, we, um, uh, do not, we do not assess their uh, um, prospection uh, efficiency in the following experiments. As for the pigulated lipid nanoparticle, for both the pigulated lipid nanoparticle, we observe a, a small size around 100 nanometers, as reported in the, this table, and um, PDI value around 0.1. So uh, the first, uh, the, the second effort was uh, in that uh, um, assess the uh, efficiency of the microfluidic device by performing uh, um, size and zeta potential uh, measurement on three different batches of the same pegylated lipid nanoparticle generated the low total flow rate. As can be seen, there are uh, all the values uh, are similar, uh, confirming the high uh, reproducibility of uh, this uh, platform. So, um, in view of uh, the biological uh, validation, um, our next eff effort was aimed at increasing the sample concentration um, of uh, these uh, this systems. Um, in fact, uh, this step will facilitate the transfection efficiency experiments in vitro, but it is also mandatory in, uh, in vivo experiments where volume less than 100 uh, microliters uh, are usually administered to mice. So uh, we, um, we perform two different approaches. Uh, the first consists in, uh, uh, in um, injecting in the microfluid channel uh, uh, two, uh, um, two uh, batch solutions of lipids and plasmid DNA, five times more concentrated. Uh, otherwise, the second approach uh, consists in uh, uh, concentrate the samples uh, after the synthesis, uh, the synthesis uh, process uh, through um, by the means of uh, centrifugal filters. As can be seen in, the, in this um, distribution, size and zeta potential uh, distributions, the um, systems obtained by the pre concentration uh, uh, approach resulted uh, um, bigger in uh, size and with the uh, zeta potential value uh, more positive. Um, this is um, probably due to uh, greater, uh, greater steric hindrance in the microfluid channel that can compromise the uh, structural uh, organization of these uh, systems. Uh, for this reason, we decided to uh, adopt the first, the second approach, so the concentration after the synthesis process. That, as uh, you can see, did, uh, did not compromise the, structure, the structural uh, organization of the, of the complexes. In fact, all the samples resulted small inside with, um, with a size about 100 nanometer. Next, we uh, perform a transmission electron microscopy analysis on, uh, this, uh, on the pigulated lipid nanoparticles. The ultrastructural analysis uh, showed uh, nanosides rounded shaped vesicles uh, and confirms uh, the sites obtained uh, with the dynamic lens scattering measurement that was about 100 uh, nanometer. Um, 
Then uh, a sex analysis was also uh, was also performed um, the, um, on this on um, these uh, pileated lipid nanoparticle complexes. As can uh, as you can see, uh, there are two uh, break peaks detected that arise from the lamellar periodicity um, along the uh, normal of the lipid layers, which an average domain size uh, of the layers made of lipids and uh, plasmid DNA that was about 28 nanometers. A value that is one order of magnitude more than the, um, the, the ones usually obtained from the sex profiles of uh, the conventional lipoplexis, uh, cationic lipoplexis. Another relevant difference was the uh, absence of a DNA peak in the sex profile. And this may be um, uh, due to um, a DNA that is not densely packed in the lipid uh, nanoparticle, and that maybe uh, can be released uh, uh, can be released easier in the cell uh, in the cell machinery. As, um, as a take-home message, we can uh, say that the regulation prevents aggravation between this kind of complexes. That by increasing the uh, decreasing the total flow rate of the microfluidic mixing, the size and the polydispersity of the sample decreases, and also that during the microfluidic mixing, the structural organization of the complexes generated by the uh, first approach, that is the pre concentration method of the bulk solution, is compromised. And uh, probably um, this is uh, due to a greater steric hindrance in the microfluidic uh, channel. So uh, next, we uh, pass to the in vitro validation of the systems. And egg cell line, human embryo kidney cell line, uh, uh, were employed to evaluate the transfection efficiency and cell viability of uh, uh, living nanoparticle, of regulated living nanoparticle uh, complexes generated uh, um, two different concentration. And as you can see in this uh, histograms, uh, which the red histograms are related to the lipid nanoparticle uh, more concentrated, and the orange histograms is related to the lipid nanoparticle uh, not concentrated, it's about 0.1 milligrams milliliters. So, uh, we can see that the um, concentrated lipid nanoparticle is more, was more efficient uh, in respecting uh, uh, cells and also le uh, less cytotoxic. So we use this concentration for the following experiments. Uh, recently, the um, low particle concentration of the cell membrane uh, um, has been identified as an overlooked factor in uh, gene delivery. And a general conclusion uh, uh, indicated that uh, this uh, the introspection strategy, um, introspection strategy could be increasing the, the DNA of the cell surface. That's why we decided to uh, test three different DNA uh, amounts for our uh, in vitro validation. So uh, that are one micrograms of DNA, two micrograms of DNA, and five micrograms of DNA. Um, it then we compared the uh, pegylated lipid nanoparticles generated at low total flow rate and high total flow rate, respectively uh, in the red histograms and the blue histograms. And as positive control, we use the uh, lipofectamine, that is the gold standard uh, of, um, for in um, vitro um, lipid based uh, transfection experiments. Um, so we can observe how uh, the um, um, lipid nanoparticle generated at low total flow rate resulted uh, um, extraordinarily efficient uh, in uh, all three uh, DNA conditions. In particular, in the first and second condition, we obtain uh, one order of magnitude uh, difference uh, uh, with respect to the uh, lipid nanoparticle at high total flow rate. Um, as for the fiber condition, uh, the gap uh, between these two systems was uh, in two orders of magnitude uh, difference. Um, moreover, a noteworthy result was that uh, this system, so the lipid nanoparticle low total flow rate, results in uh, uh, all three conditions um, um, more efficient than the light effect. I mean, that is, uh, as I said, the uh, gold standard for these lipofection experiments. 
So uh, another observation is that, uh, was that uh, uh, with the increasing of the DNA, the transfection efficiency of the um, light, uh, liquid nanoparticle at low total flow rates increased. But an opposite trend was found for the other uh, com uh, the complexes generated at high uh, total flow rates. So uh, to better interpret this uh, uh, behavior, we decided to perform a cell, bi cell, uh, cell viability uh, assay. And we can see that um, for the complexes at low total flow rates, uh, the cell viability values was higher than 70% in all the three conditions. As for the uh, liquid nanoparticles at high total flow rates, they result uh, uh, in all the conditions uh, uh, highly cytotoxic with the value similar to the um, lipofactamine. So uh, in conclusion, we demonstrated that uh, manufacturing parameters such as the absence or presence of PEG, the total flow rate of the microfluidic mixing and the concentration of the sample could affect the physical chemical uh, uh, properties of um, um, DNA loaded lipid uh, nanoparticles. And uh, these findings uh, permit, uh, allows us to generate an efficient DNA loaded lipid nanoparticle that uh, result uh, poorly toxic uh, in, um, in, uh, in vitro. So uh, this may be a uh, relevant, uh, re uh, relevant uh, finding uh, and it can be uh, applied in several uh, research fields ranging from uh, gene therapy to DNA vaccination uh, and um, cancer immunotherapy. Our ongoing studies uh, now are focusing on first on the understanding of the urethral um, lipid role uh, as a substitute of the cationic lipid in uh, pegylated lipid uh, nanoparticles. In addition, we will try to um, uh, understand, uh, um, investigate the mechanism, the intracellular mechanism um, of the, um, this, uh, this kind of uh, system through confocal microscopy analysis, uh, for example, by marking the uh, lipid shell with a fluorophore or, or the DNA. Uh, finally, um, another study should, um, could be uh, the, um, the investigation of the interaction between these systems and the biological uh, fluids. Um, in fact, uh, it is uh, now well known that the uh, biomolecular layer the formed around uh, the forms around the nanoparticle when they are exposed to biological fluids alters uh, drastically the synthetic identity of the, um, of the systems and uh, also the, the biological uh, fate of the um, of gene delivery systems. And in addition, the, the um, protein, the biomolecular uh, layer uh, could, uh, of the lipid nanoparticle uh, um, that will uh, encapsulate uh, DNA uh, had never been uh, studied at all. So um, this could be a fundamental uh, step uh, um, to, uh, for making gene delivery uh, move from uh, basic research uh, to uh, clinical uh, application. Thank you for your kind attention and uh, uh, special thanks to my research uh, group uh, that uh, strongly support me and that um, without which I would never be able to carry on this, uh, this work. Thank you. Um, thanks for that. And I think um, with that, we are slightly over time. So um, thanks again for uh, your amazing talk, for, for taking the time. Thanks to the audience for being here today and have a Merry Christmas. Um, we see each other yeah, again in the next year with the next tea time. Have a great week and goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you.